the uh, improvement that they've made throughout the spring, and, and I just know the hard work and the effort they put in over the summer to see these kids back. I go bigger, we're stronger, we look better, you know, from an upper class standpoint. I feel good about the incoming freshmen. You know, we didn't have a chance to really see them, but to see how their bodies have changed and what they reported here at the beginning of June to where they're at right now, you know, I think is encouraging. I think it's encouraging, too, just throughout our summer program as coaches, we aren't able to get involved with the kids to see how the older kids have worked with the younger kids see how far along our younger kids are, understanding the package and understanding the defense. I think that's credit to our older kids because as coaches, they don't let us do any of the X and O's with them. So we felt good about where those kids were at from an understanding. So you know, it was day one, I think, was solid. Was okay. What, uh, if, you know, if you don't mind us asking, just kind of what are your impressions of some of the new guys? I know, obviously. You know, we're going to watch the tape here. It's hard to say. Again, I, really, I, I try to focus on you know, the two safeties that I'm coaching, and if we had a breakdown, what happened? So for me to sit here and tell you how some of the young guys up front and the linebackers did, I couldn't tell you. I don't really get a chance to watch them until we go watch video, but I know they're good-looking kids. I know they move well. They add some, like I said, they add some depth, probably more important, so they give us some, good, they give us some competition. And again, I think when you've got a combination of competition, that's going to give you quality depth. Depth, and I think that's going to help you know, each player make better, make them better. So feel good about that. What do you think about those two safeties? I mean, you mentioned watching that Yeah, closely. again, just working with those two guys. Um, again, I, I felt good just where they're at from a, a knowledge and an understanding. Um, again, you're out there in the helmets. And, you know, I'd like to think both of them are going to hit. That's the thing we liked about them when they were coming out of high school. They're tough, physical kids. And they didn't necessarily get a chance to prove that today, but felt good about their movement skills. Felt good about you know, overall understanding of at least the coverages and the calls that we put in here today. You know, I think they're two kids that, you know, that they're hard, tough, hard-nosed kids, and I think they're gonna they're gonna have a chance to play for us some this year. What kind of expectations do you have for the freshmen coming? I mean, I know, I know it's early, but you know, what are you looking for? How much impact they can have? And this this is still their first year of college football. Right. Ball. You know, again, some of those kids, just like we have in the last couple of years, they're gonna be thrown into the mix and thrown into the fire. So we're gonna give them an opportunity. You know, because we went out, we went into recruiting this past year. It's one of the things we felt we had to address, and that was some of our depth issues there on defense. So, you know, I think we went out into recruiting. Those kids were talked to about an opportunity to come in here and compete from day one, so we're going to give them that opportunity. You know, we just didn't have the depth and the numbers, certain positions on defense, that you know, we couldn't afford not to recruit in that position. So, like I said, we're, we're going we're gonna to continue to challenge them. They're going to be thrown in the fire here the next three weeks, and we're going to see how they respond. It seemed today just like uh, there was a lot of, I mean, talking, I guess, just communication seemed up maybe from where yeah. it was this time a year ago. Is it, yeah, we've got, yeah, yeah, and again, that's one thing, even as we talk to the defense this morning before we went out, we've got to do a better job of communicating. And again, I think sometimes communication there, if you're not communicating, sometimes it's because there may be some indecision in a young man's mind. I think we're far enough along now where our kids you know, know the responsibility they're able to talk and they're able to communicate amongst the other 10 guys there to make sure we're on the same page. So that's been a huge, huge point of emphasis here in the offseason and as we start camp. It sounds like uh, I was talking to Greg Even up in Chicago. He said that was the main goal for him this summer was to get guys like Allen yeah. and Dutra uh, a bit further advanced in regard to understanding this game. It sounds like you've seen that. We are. And again, I think you look at a guy like Greg. I think Greg can coach all three of those spots back there. He's played corner, he's played nickel, and he's played safety. So I think you got a guy that's got that kind of experience. He better have a pretty good understanding of what we're doing back there, you know, from every position. So you've got a guy like that, you know, you put him in that position where he's got to be kind of the vocal guy back there. But we still put it on the other ten guys, too. Everyone's got to know the call. Everyone's got to know the responsibility. We want those kids talking and communicating better than what we've done in the past. What does Tim Bennett bring to, the, to that cornerback position? Obviously, yeah, you've worked with the Again, some flexibility, too. You know, here's a guy that played all spring at safety. And then, uh, you know, like I said, just a little bit of depth issues there at the corner spot. We knew that he, again, last fall he played corner, and then we moved him. And you had Murphy out, and our numbers were so thin throughout the spring, we moved him to safety and then back to corner. But, again, he gives you that flexibility. I think what he's able to do, at least at the safety spot, is get him involved a little bit more in the run game give him an opportunity to play a little bit more physical. And now all of a sudden you put him out there on the corner. I think you've got you know, guy worked all summer on his coverage skills and playing from that spot. And, you know, I think you combine those two skills. If you can cover and you can hit, you got a chance to be a pretty good corner.
Uh, you know, there's, you know, you talked about some of the inner freshmen, and this is a corner set of the safety, mm -hmm. but I've heard some good things about Fant in terms of his coverability, yeah. his hips. And that I've heard that too, and I haven't <laughs> seen it yet, so yeah, no, I just, yeah. <laughs> but, I'm excited uh, to see it. But, but can, can a kid play at 162 pounds? I mean, oh. I, it's, is it... Is that, too, is that a lot to ask of a kid to come in and play at that size? Uh, you know, he may be 162 right now, but he's gained weight since he's been okay. here. So I think that's still a work in progress. You know, sometimes maybe if you have a slighter guy at corner, you know, you may be able to put him in some positions where maybe he's not always, you know, right in the thick of the run game. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can take a guy like that. If he's not the most physical guy you have, and maybe play him as a field corner and kind of try to hide him a little bit. You know, he's got good coverage skills from what I understand. I know he's athletic. He's got great movement skills and change of direction. I think any time that you've got that, those are some pretty good qualities for a corner position. But, uh, you know, he, he just got to continue to eat, continue to lift, and hopefully continue to mature. I wish I had that problem. <laughs> yeah. depth, depth is as a theme. Mm -hmm. How would you evaluate the, the collective at linebacker, the whole group? Again, you know, I feel good about the three young linebackers. They appear to move pretty good physically. They're all good-looking kids. Uh, just a little bit of what I saw, they appear to move pretty well. Um, linebacker's probably one of the more difficult positions to learn, so it's a little bit more of a learning curve, a little bit more of a learning process there. But, you know, I feel good with the guys coaching them. You know, like Will will do a tremendous job with those guys there. They're going to get thrown in the mix here and start getting more and more reps. How important is this guy like T.J. Simmons a little advanced since he was here Huge, in the yeah. I mean, you look at T.J. where he was at day one in the spring, he was lost. And again, here's T.J. that, you know, at least we had opportunities to work with him throughout winter conditioning. And then he came in those first four practices of spring ball, he was lost. But I think after that, you just see how he continued to develop throughout the remaining 11 practices and just where he's at right now. It takes time. And I think the worst thing you can do on defense is a guy that's out there confused and a guy that's out there thinking. Like I said, it's our job as coaches. we got to teach them a scheme, teach them where their vision is supposed to be, and teach them how, you know, how to react within that picture that they see there. So, like I said, it's still a work in progress. With linebacker position, there are just so many little nuances involved in that position that take a little bit of time to learn. It's obviously How other, but when you look around just uh, just the entire defense, you kind of see more viable options at every spot than you've well, ever had so. here. Again, I think just as we get a little bit more athletic, we get a little bit more depth, and we get a little bit more competition there, I'd like to think. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think so. I, again, it, you know, it's just hard to tell after day one. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's still some things we got to get better at. You know, the thing we're, we're trying to do is get 11 guys the ball. You know, mm -hmm. one guy makes a mistake, you got 10 other guys to overcome that mistake. So I'd like to think we've got a little bit more speed on defense now. Uh, I think we've got more depth on the defensive line. We were very thin mm -hmm. throughout spring. And you know, like I said, you lose the two starters there and, and a backup. And that really thinned us out through spring. So it's good to get a little bit more size and a little bit more strength in there than maybe we had in the spring. With the linebackers, how important is David's leadership, especially with all the flying parts on either side of him? Uh, yeah, again, you know, it starts here to middle back. I think you play good on defense. You better be pretty good right down the middle. And again, a lot of times it's going to start with that Mike backer. So again, I think with he and TJ. And the good thing about Coop, too, uh, again, he's he's got the, I think he's he's got the ability to be a good Mike linebacker. But I think he's got flexibility. He can bump out to an outside backer, too. If, if we had to do it, he's smart enough. He's certainly athletic enough to do it. You got TJ, so I think we've got a little bit of flexibility in there too. So we'll, we'll kind of see how that unfolds. You know, and get the best three guys out there. How much is the, the whole Hubler thing? How, how much does that hurt you? Right now? Well, again, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know how much I can comment on that. And what all's been released, but you know, Chase's been a great kid. He's, he's been a big part of our program here. You know, I like to hope we get him back here eventually. I just I don't know the extent of the injury. And, and, uh, What's been shared to this point. He said stress fracture. Yeah, stress fracture. And, uh, you guys probably know more about it. Than <laughs> <that>. <laughs> it's a, it's a, I just knew he was out for a while. Yeah, he said so. it was maybe a 50 50 thing about whether gotcha. he had surgery or not. Yeah, and, and that's so. unfortunate. The young man's worked hard. Yeah. It, does his injury make it, you know, increase the, the possibility or the viability of Cooper playing outside some maybe? Again, you know, it just thins you out a little bit more. I think it just puts some of those younger guys in probably a little bit. More of a position where we got to get ready, but again, I think you know when you do that, you've got to get your three best linebackers on the field. And whether that's if TJ and Cooper, you know, two of the three best linebackers, I don't want one back and the other one up. I'd like to yeah. at least have some flexibility, let them settle in at one position, and let them get good there. So.
kind of one of the big things we're doing differently than we did a year ago is we're trying to play linebackers a lot more on early down. You know, like whereas in years past we've played so much more neck on. You know, we've gotten to the point now we feel like we've upgraded some of the athleticism at the linebacker spot. But those kids can get out there and play in space, play with top of you know, receiver out there. So you know, we're not matching or subbing there as much as what we did our first two years. What's it been like working with William Well, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, said, I think the world might get.